Hey guys, it's also a digital power trip. I'm coming at you with a video today about a arcade emulation front end called Maximus Arcade. Uh, so what it is, it's a paid licensed front end uh, to do arcade and retro emulation. Right now they're running a special for $9.99. So if you buy it now on their website, it's $9.99. But they also have a 30 day free trial. We're trying out the free trial before we buy it. So I'm gonna jump into what we think about it from the standpoint of playing with it and then at the end I'll come back with my final thoughts and do a quick recap. So first thing we're going to do is go to maximus-arcade.com. Once we're here uh, we will go to the download now link uh, we'll link to this in the video description so it's easy for you guys to find if you're interested. Uh, once you're here, you'll click uh, Maximus Arcade, free download. This will get us our trial. You'll put your email address in here and they will email you a link that you need to download this file. So we've already done this, so I'm going to close this down. And once you get the link, it will come, uh, your download will come as a zip file. You have to unzip it. It'll uh, we I unzipped it to my desktop because it's easy to find. Once you're here, we're gonna go to our front end, and we're going to go to preferences. Uh, this thing is a real bear to set up. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna show you what it took us to get the NES portion running, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you a forewarning. If you want to get into a nice pretty emulation front end spend thirty dollars buy a raspberry pi and get the free retro pi front end ten times better than this easier to do and when this thing's not on sale right now it's on sale for ten dollars but when it's not on sale it's twenty five bucks so spend thirty dollars and it save yourself a ton of heartache and trouble so now that that rants over i'm going to go back into showing you what you need to do so we're going to come into preferences. Once this opens, the first thing we're going to do is go to display order. Out of the box, this had everything that this emulator had to offer uh, over here in display order. What you want to do is delete everything because if you don't delete it, it's going to come up with an error when you launch saying that all of these emulators don't have any files uh, associated with them and they don't work. So. All we're going to do right now is uh, NES, and that's just because it takes so damn long that if we did anything else, you'd be here all day. So uh, NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, add. So that's done. We're going to come to configuration. Once you're in configuration, you want to go into this bottom portion and click scan. Uh, you want to click scan within subfolders, force rescan of media folder, and always force rescan uh, a media folder on startup. We ran into an issue when we first set this thing up that we tried to use Contra. For some reason, it didn't want to. The emulator didn't want to run Contra. And then after I deleted Contra, every time I reopened the uh, M the Maximus Arcade, Contra was still there. And yet I had deleted it. It wasn't on the computer anymore, but it still showed that it was there, ready to run. So this is what you have to do to make that work. So once you have that done, you have to download a emulator for this front end to use to, to, you know, to run the game. If you go to the README portion here and scroll down to whichever system you're using, you can, it'll give you a list of emulators that'll work with this. So we came to Nintendo Entertainment System, and we're using uh, Virtual NES. So... Uh, I downloaded this from Emu Paradise, Emu Paradise, Tomato Tomato, but that's where I got it. Once you download it, it is a executable file in a folder like this. So what you'll do is come back to configuration where it says executable. You'll point it to that executable file, which is virtual NES that we downloaded. So you'll select that. Inside of this Virtual NES, you have to create a new folder for your ROMs. It has to be in the same folder that the executable file's in for this thing to recognize it. So we're going to do a new folder 
you name it, ROMs, and then you put your ROMs inside of this folder. I gotta go to my downloads real quick. And I have Mike Tyson's punch out, so I'm going to extract that to my folder that I just made. So now that the .nes file is inside of the ROMs folder we created, we can go back to our preferences and we ha actually have to make another folder. This isn't necessary. If you want to add like album art to your ROMs, you have to make a folder inside of, same place, inside of the virtual NES folder called Snaps. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it. I don't have any snapshots or anything saved of um, Mike Tyson to use as a album art, but we're just going to go ahead and make it for uh, just so you understand how difficult this thing is really to use. So we're going to come back to preferences. Then we're going to go to controller. Um, we're just going to set up an Xbox 360 controller. So inside controller, you have to go to joystick and you have to select to capture your joystick input. Another issue that I ran into was I didn't click this and my joystick wouldn't come up. So make sure you have that clicked. So after that, you're going to come in to set up one and you click to highlight and then you push the buttons you want to use. And this actually works pretty well, unlike the rest of this thing. All right, so now that we have something set up here, that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and close this. Uh, yes, we do want to save. So save. Okay. Yes. Close. Then we're going to come back to our Maximus Arcade. Go back to front end and we're going to launch it. So now that it's launched, no, we don't want to register. Okay, so it's scanning those folders like we set it up to do. So now it's going to come up and it's going to show us that we have one NES game, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. We're going to launch it. So it launches it in like 200 by 300 resolution, which is what this thing's set up to do. But instead of... Hold on a second, I'm going to turn my volume down so it's not so obnoxious. All right, so anyway, uh, instead of it stretching it to your screen size, it's just going off of whatever your preferences were set on that Virtua NES. So if you want this to be full screen, you have to click it, then click Alt-Enter, and it still doesn't really work. So I mean, I'm telling you guys, this company's tried to do a, a really good thing by giving you a, you know, a pretty front end to use with your Windows machine, but I'm telling you, it is worth $30 to buy a Raspberry Pi and use RetroPie because it's a free front end that not only looks better but functions a hundred times better and is more user friendly. And like I've said, we're no technology slacks here and this really irritated me to set up. So like I said, that's my final thoughts. Um, like I said, I applaud these, these guys that uh, made this for trying to make a good front end but it's just not, not where it needs to be. So we'll hopefully have some more videos coming you guys way soon. Uh, check out the link in the description if you're interested in messing around with this thing. So we'll see you next time.